certain bank angle. It shows us the speed, the angle of attack, the altitude, the heading. Then it gives us some information about the engines, of the configuration, flaps and slats, of the fuel quantities, of the autopilot engagement modes. So just by having a, a glance at that screen, we have a very good overall picture um, of the airplane. The aircraft is equipped with sophisticated flight instrumentation. Thousands of sensors that record every aspect of the plane's performance. Gathering this precious data is the primary purpose of the test flight program. If on the day of the first flight, the flight instrumentation does not work, we will not fly. But despite the seriousness of the task ahead, there's no doubt the A380 is beginning to generate a real buzz. It's really great to be here. We've been waiting for it so long, and, uh, and now it's, uh, we're almost there. March the 30th, 2005, and the prototype is in the hangar again, as engineers perform final tests. The flight controls are working, but one system still remains unproven. The last set of landing gear tests almost a month ago did not go well. While testing the emergency backup, the wing gear snagged on the door and needed some grease to make it work. Now Simon Sanders is back for a last ditch attempt to prove that the gear will deploy smoothly. His team have been working round the clock to solve the problem. This is the ramp on the wing gear door where we put the grease last time. Now for a more robust solution, we've applied a, a layer of Teflon paint, which is similar to the, the Teflon, the coating that you have on uh, non-stick uh, frying pans. So this will reduce the friction when we do the pre-fall. We're going to now perform the test to demonstrate that with this low friction Teflon coating that we've, we've solved the problem. Gérard Debois will be on the first flight and he's here to represent the flight test department. If Gerard is not happy, the first flight will be delayed. This is make or break time. I want to be sure on this aircraft, before taking the aircraft in the flight test department, that the landing gear is working perfectly well. If it doesn't work, I will refuse the aircraft until the system is completely safe. As the gear is retracted for the test, Everyone is aware that they cannot afford to fail. In the cockpit, the system is primed. C'est parti, je lance. Despite the Teflon coating on the ramp, the left wing gear still catches on the door. But at least it slips free faster this time. If the plane were flying, the airstream will probably shake the gear free sooner still. But it's up to Gerard to decide whether he's happy to accept the plane as it is. It's not marvelous, but... Uh... It is working, and at least even if the, 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 the left landing gear is not extended at the same time as the right one, uh, yes, I think I will accept it. Yes. The team will continue to refine the system, but at least the prototype is close to being airworthy. What the company needs now is customers. With 154 firm orders, they are still 100 sales short of breaking even. But Chief Commercial Officer John Leahy is confident that new markets are there for the taking. Think about it. In India, there are more people who take the train every day than fly in the entire year. Think about the potential if you've got an airplane that can match the cost of taking a train. Never want to miss an opening. John has traveled 5,000 miles looking for new customers. 
With one-sixth of the world's population, hardly any of whom fly, this is the land of opportunity. You know, there are about 1.1 billion people in India right now. 1.1 billion people. Depending upon how you define middle class, there are more middle class people in India than there are in Western Europe or in the United States. Imagine if they flew. This, this market would take off. The first stop on this lightning visit is to meet Captain G. R. Gopina, head of India's first low-cost carrier, Air Deccan. Even today, for example, uh, if you come to any of our flights, 30 to 40 per percent of the passengers on my flights on a very flight every day are first-time travelers. 30 yeah. to 40 percent yeah. of the people on the airplane have today. never been on an airplane in yeah. their lives? On an Air Deccan flight today, 30 to 40 percent of passengers are first-time flyers. They've never flown in their life. We have a lot of, uh, air Deccan have had great success offering budget air travel. But can the A380, a plane that's always been sold as the height of luxury, appeal to a low-cost carrier? So you probably aren't that interested in the jacuzzi. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the first-class lounge uh, isn't going to fit I mean, into your business model. Uh, that is uh, maybe Vijay but, and Vijay Malias. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the range payload... And the economics of what you're looking for, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Deccan are not ready to order yet, but with 14 million people cramming India's trains every day, an aircraft that could compete in this market should be a hit. Enter Vijay Malia, the billionaire owner of perhaps India's most famous brand, Kingfisher. Malia's core business is brewing, but he also has a small airline with big plans, among them the purchase of many new aircraft. With machine gun toting bodyguards in tow, the two businessmen head for Malia's yacht to talk Turkey over the A380. I've got two potential Kingfisher specs here. One spec I've got actually has an all one class interior which would give you about 865 seats and then I've got a two class configuration with a very elegant business first in about a 555 seat configuration. My main concern at this point in time would be airport infrastructure in India mm -hmm. and whether the airport infrastructure can handle mm -hmm. uh, that kind of passenger density per flight mm -hmm. but uh, yes absolutely you know the 380 with uh, 800 plus seats is certainly an option. When's the first one going to fly? We will have the first flight of this airplane before the end of April. And wow. we'll be doing route proving. I'll make a point of bringing it to India. We will do route proving over the next 12 months. It'll fly to New Delhi. Great. Bombay. Brilliant. As the negotiations get more sensitive, the doors are closed. But after two hours of talks, the cameras are allowed back in. And at last, there's a signature. There we go. Unfortunately, it's for an Airbus corporate jet, the second smallest plane the company makes. Well, that was a busy day. <laughs> the interesting thing about the day is the fact that we came to sell an 865 passenger airplane and sold an eight passenger airplane. You know? That's part of the game. Uh, I guess it is part of the game. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. I may have to start with selling him a corporate jet, but he will one day buy an A380, and it will change the face of Indian aviation. Back in Toulouse, there's an important milestone. The time has come for the engineers to down tools and hand the plane over to the test flight team. With the pilots being the first customers, and with their safety at stake, it's essential that they are happy. Flight test director Fernando Alonso is taking the chance to look around the plane to check that nothing has been missed in the final push. Like always at the end there's a big rush, we'll get very excited. Uh, but if, at some point in time you need to take a decision, okay now stop, uh, it's over and, uh, and we take it over because otherwise it will just go on forever and ever. So. The plane is equipped with everything needed for the testing to come, including these water tanks that will simulate the weight of hundreds of passengers. But in the rush to get the plane...